there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make embellishments out of some unusual objects. This video is brought to you by ArtNeco.com. Mention the Frugal Crafter to save 10% on your order or get free shipping over 50. So the product we're going to use today first is a soda can. And I saw this can of um, iced tea kind of sitting ready, ready to go to the recycling bin. And I thought, boy, there's some really nice um, areas on that can that I could die cut. So what I did basically was I cut the can down. I used an X-Acto knife to cut off the top and bottom of the can and now I'm just cutting um, the you know main piece into two parts so that it can fit through my die cut machine and um, I'm using the magnetic plate it doesn't really matter what base plate you use as long as it's the right thickness um, and if it isn't you can shim it because the metal is pretty thin and um, I'm using some dies and the ones that are pink are from Tesla I believe and the ones that are uh, kind of that bronze color are from Spellbinders I did find the Spellbinders ones cut a little bit better um, they seem to be a little bit sharper or a little deeper or something but you can pretty much use any thin dye on this just you know shim it if you need to so the first obstacle you're gonna have when you're trying to do this is that the can is gonna want to kind of bounce it's um it's going to want to pop those dies off so the way I solved that was to take a little bit of washi tape and tape down my dies uh, as I ran them through I also did use a metal shim when I was cutting these thin dies, but keep in mind my machine is older, so my rollers might be a little bit looser than yours. Um, but I found it worked really well. You do want to be careful um, on those raw edges that you cut with the scissors not to cut yourself, but I found that after you um, die cut it, those edges are a little rounded over and they're not so sharp. I mean, I wouldn't go running my finger across it to test, but um, just general hand handling of it is fairly safe. I wouldn't put this as a project to do with kids, um, but you know, and do it at your own risk be careful but uh, you can make some really cool embellishments this way if you don't want to work with metal that is totally fine use this idea as a jumping point and raid your recycling bin look for cereal boxes or cracker boxes or clothing labels or old placemats things with cool patterns on it and die cut your embellishments from that you'll be saving the environment and coming up with some really cool craft supplies that you can use with your kids that won't be as sharp as metal I did that with some later on in the card video I thought these keys kind of had a bit of a steampunk vibe, so I chose a stamp from the steampunk set from artneco.com and I'm inking it up with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. The reason I'm using Memento is because it's compatible with alcohol pens and I plan on coloring this with alcohol markers. I'm using a curved block because my stamp is not mounted. Basically, when I get my stamps, I usually just get the red rubber only and I put some Aliens Tacket over and over on the back so it will stick to my clear blocks. And then when I use these clear mounts like this on my larger stamps, I get a perfect impression and I don't have to go through the expense or extra storage space of having a foam on my stamp. So that's why I do it, but you can certainly use foam mounted stamps if you prefer. I made a five inch by seven inch card base out of heavyweight black cardstock and just used a little bit of washi tape to stick it closed on my workspace so I wouldn't be chasing that around my whole card making session. Now I'm using Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink to um, stamp some gears from that same steampunk stamp set all over the card base. Now I don't need to put it in the middle because I know that's where my focal point will go. Um, so I'm basically just kind of doing the perimeter and a little bit on the bottom. Pretty much anything I think might show uh, underneath my embellishments. Um, Versamark ink is really handy to have because it allows you to um, color with chalks or perlex powders or other things so you get a lot of versatility from one product. If you don't have Versamark ink though you can take some vegetable glycerin on a cosmetic sponge and dab that on your stamps. The best thing about it is you don't need to clean your stamps when you're done because the uh, glycerin that's in that ink actually protects and conditions your stamps. So uh, the nice thing about this ink is it's very slow drying. I haven't stopped to um, to brush on any chalk at this point I am just using it um, using it to ink up and my ink will stay wet enough as I'm doing this now I'm opening up my little jars of Pearl X powder and basically it's a colored mica powder uh, it's very nice and a little bit goes a long way so if you do have this or you do invest in it it will go a long way but if you don't have it uh, you can get um, powder mica eyeshadow from like the dollar store that works really well or you could even use any of your um, pearlescent eyeshadow you already have uh, so don't feel like you have to run out and buy this the Pearl X is going to give you a brighter result meaning it's just more pigmented but um, but you can really get a very similar 
similar effect using eyeshadow. The other thing that's kind of cool with this technique is you can do this on light cardstock using any of your chalk pastels and it's such a pretty look. So I highly encourage you to try this if you've never tried it before. So uh, I did all the gold, I wiped off my brush, did the blue, and then I'm gonna follow up with this kind of um, you know pinky red color because those are some colors I know I'm gonna be working into my design. So I just like to repeat uh, those same colors throughout my background and other parts of my card. Once you've brushed on all the powder, you'll need to fix it down a little bit. And what I like to do is just take a regular old Kleenex tissue, just a non-lotion tissue, and I just rub over the entire design. And this pulls off any of the powder that was stuck on the cardstock with no ink. The ink is what locks it down. But if you're concerned of it rubbing off on your fingers later, what you can do is grab some hairspray. I like to use the cheapest I can find, which is usually aerosol Aquanet. And I just give it a nice coat. And, um, and it, you know, you can get it unscented. It has a mild, pleasant smell and that will lock it down and it doesn't really dull the shine too much so um, I'm pretty happy with that. Now if your paper warps a little bit what I would do is set a piece of wax paper on top and put a book on top while you're working on the rest of your card. By now my ink on the stamped image is plenty dry for coloring and I'm just using some alcohol pens to uh, color the design. I'm starting off with this um, kind of wrought iron um, like a kind of screen at the top of the image and I'm just going in with the brush tip of these pens. Now these are a new pen to me. I'm going to be reviewing them probably um, in a week or so and I'm just trying to get a few cards under my belt done with these before I give my opinion on them. Um, and basically just go through and flat color everything. The only shading I really did on the entire card was on the balloon. Everything else is pretty much just solid color. When you have um, really detailed images like this you can't really get in and do too much as far is shading so um, a flat color is fine with this it's gonna look fantastic and use whatever medium you're comfortable with just make sure that you use a medium that's compatible with the type of ink that you used after it was colored I simply trimmed it out with my large postage edge scissors so it could kind of look like a vintage postcard or a vintage photograph to make it a little more vintagey feeling I took some uh, brown ink on a sponge dauber and just uh, dusted the edges with a little bit of that frayed burlap distress oxide ink. But honestly you can use any sort of uh, brown ink or chalk or metallic rub-ons that you have. Um, it'll look just as pretty. It's just to give you a little bit of uh, character to it. Now you want to gather up the card base and the other die cuts that you did and get everything together so you are ready to make your card. And I'm zooming out just a little bit so you can see the entire thing and I'm just kind of playing with the placement of my focal point. Now I did make this envelope out of um, some Can Company paper previously and I think I'm going to use one of the off cut scraps to um, decorate the front of the card. Like I mentioned in like every video lately I make my envelopes first especially if I'm doing a size where I don't have a pre-made envelope and then I I use the scraps to either decorate part of the inside of the card or some of the front of the card so that it matches. I'm going to trim this to the width of my card and uh, then tear it so I get uh, kind of another cool vintage layer going there. Now it's time to think about how we're going to fit everything onto our card base. I did go ahead and put that strip of uh, cardstock down the center and I'm just placing my uh, focal point in different embellishments around. Now this is a thick die. This um, is Gadget Gears by Tim Holtz and I use that to cut the gears out of mat board which is a very kind of eighth inch thick uh, dense material. So uh, whenever I am thinking about die cutting thick things I go for my thick dies. If I'm die cutting small things I'll go for my thin dies. Although your thick dies will cut thin and thick material. So keep that in mind when you are purchasing dies. What do you want to cut with it? Is it something you're going to want to cut felt and cardboard and thicker things? Go with a thick die. If you know you're only going to want to cut paper or cardstock or thin metal, then you can um, get by with the thin dies because the thin dies do cost less. So keep that in mind to make sure you're purchasing products that will do the job that you want. I also have to consider how I'm going to glue these items down to my card. Um, I do have my hot glue gun heating up because I know that's going to be a really great solution for my um, for the gears. But for the thinner metal pieces, you got to be careful with hot glue because you can get burned quite easily uh, as the metal will heat up with the glue. Plus, I think I would kind of like uh, a more industrial look when I attach those. So uh, a good idea might be like uh, using a staple gun. But I had these. Um, 
screw top brads, which I thought looked really industrial and steampunk. So I thought that would be an excellent choice. Here I am poking a hole through that um, little piece of paper that I attached on top and I'm putting my brad through the key and through that. That way I won't have the brad legs sticking out in the middle of my card. When I go to adhere the, um, the kind of the heart with a lock in it, all I have to do is kind of just uh, wedge the little ends of the brad behind the um, gear in front of it and I'll be able to tuck that away easily. And now that I'm sure about my placement of my embellishments, I can go ahead and it ha attach them with hot glue. And this is a same old faithful glue gun I've used for years. You could use a smaller craft one, it will work just fine. And if you don't want to use hot glue, notice how I'm holding the gear there so I don't burn myself on the metal embellishment. Um, if you don't want to use hot glue, I recommend Beacon 3-in-1 or Helmar 450. Those are almost like hot glue, except they're a cold glue. Um, they are a little on the pricey side, but it's, it's an option when you want that thick, quick, dry glue and you don't want to deal with hot glue. Because my stamped image is going to rest on a couple of those thick matte board uh, die cut pieces, I need to make sure my adhesive is going to bring up the difference in the middle of the, um, the focal point. That way it doesn't get crushed and dented when I mail it. So I'm using foam tape to kind of bring up the um, image other than where it's resting on the die cut and that way I'll have a really nice stable foundation. Um, now looking at this card at this point, I'm really happy with it, but I felt that it could use a little bit of um, I don't know, like antiquing a bit. So I decided to grab my ink pad and um, just kind of use my finger and or a sponge, whatever is easier for you, and just kind of hit some of those bright teal embellishments with uh, that frayed burlap ink. Now, after I did that, I thought, oh, you know, I wish I used like maybe a gold, metallic gold, but the, um, the ink that I'm using actually is kind of sticky. It's the Distress Oxide, so it does dry slowly. So I knew that I could actually go in with some of that mica powder and brush some of that on there and bring out a little bit of uh, brightness to the card. Now, because my card base is black, I wanted to do something to the inside of the card so it would be easier to write on. That way you wouldn't have to use like an opaque white pen or a gel pen um, to be able to put a greeting in there. So I decided to use some of this uh, ledger paper and this is from the Everyday Essentials stack from Die Cuts with a View. It has a lot of just kind of like really muted neutral type patterns. And I cut one edge of the paper with that um, same decorative scissor that I used to cut my focal image. And, um, and for those of you that think decorative scissors are are dead. There are so many cool ways to use decorative scissors. Think of all the uh, fancy border dies that are out on the market that are so expensive. You can do so much with the decorative scissors that mimics those expensive dies. So I'm also taking some washi tape here because I love it and I have quite a stash and I'm using that to adhere down that paper and really that's all there is to it. If you want you can accent the paper by stamping some of the gears that you used in the background on the front and that kind of makes everything match and um that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. I want to thank ArtNeco.com for sponsoring this video today. I will link up to the stamp set I used in the video description so you can check that out. And um, they have a lot of other great, great stamp sets there too. So if steampunk's not your thing, check out their other stuff. They have some beautiful nature inspired and Asian inspired designs as well. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy crafting. Thank you.